It's been a big year at Cooley Bar. From the wet start... The river sort of backs up and the house actually becomes sort of an island. ...through the many musters. The Joneses have been through a lot. They're so far from anywhere, I don't want anything to happen to him. They copy that, do If someone goes missing, you've got to be straight out there looking for them, you know? You'd lost and perish in this country quick. But never alone. Oh, it's great. Really important to have family around. Some dreams came true. He got second. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Really good. But Jeff's never got off the ground. I'd so love to be in the air. Jump in there, Jeff! Jump in there, Jeff! Jump in there, Jeff! I've had one fella turn up here once and he didn't even know how to open that gate over there. And he ended up a good man, so you never know, eh? In this episode... Yeehaw! You always wanted a bull rider, didn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the gang's back home. But this isn't the warm welcome they wanted. We're still losing her. She's still going. As fire threatens the station... Want me to get it? Yeah, I'll be. The kid comes to the rescue. <coughs> but will it finally earn him his place in the sky? A bit more water. After their day at the races, it's back to business for the folks at Cooley Bar. As long as you're having fun, it's a good day. <laughs> Except on any day round here, business is anything but usual. It's a little bit off-putting, actually. But you got to eat, I guess. The only ones stuck in the same old routine are the rookie pilot and his patient mentor, Stephen Groves. What would happen if this ear fell? It'll come loose and just... No, if this ear fell off, you'd be sticking your head between your knees and kiss, mate. I don't, yeah. You're dead. Jeff's been three months no. at Cooley Bar, and he still hasn't got the OK to fly. Yeah, you know, one of these is like getting in a Ferrari sports car, you know, it's not... They're not cheap. It's not you've got to give them right to go and jump in one, you've got to earn that right. Luckily, over at the homestead, Christina won't have any troubles getting into the thing she loves. This is the camp drafting for little Milton and me. Inspired by Trevor's race, Christina's signed herself and the little man up for a competition next month. He's going in the mini draft and a potty ride. Real bull rider, eh? You're going to get ready for the potty calf ride. Yeah. So every day until then, little Milton's in training. Now, big muscles there, that's it. And the buck starts here. Right on. Into him. Yeehaw! Into him, spur him up a bit. <laughs> He's hanging on good, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I've got it. Yeah. He's got the action. Yeah, do it again. <laughs> he Hamish is first. <laughs> Little Milton's leading the Australian champion title at the moment. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That's it, throw your arm back. He's got the style, you know, eh? I don't want to scare him with it. Concentrate on what you're doing now. Well, you can look at it two ways. I could scare him because I don't really want him to be a bull rider for the rest of his life. He might be a bull rider. Well, I hope so. No. <laughs> No, you always wanted a bull rider, didn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Right, right. I've got work to do. As Christina ponders little Milton's life choices, it's back to work for Milton. He's going to check on his grazing paddocks. Well, I've got about 3,000 wieners to go there, and I've got a fresh feed there, you know. For the king of Coolibar, it's just another day. It's good going, eh? Pays the wages. Love it, mate, love it. <laughs> but Cooley Bar is about to remind Milton how unpredictable she can be. Oh, shit. We got a bit of a fire there up on top. Drop a match out of the motor car. And that wind flared it up and we got a big fire right where I'm going to put all my wieners. 
The feed for over 3,000 head of cattle is in the path of the fire. If the paddocks are lost, well, it doesn't bear thinking about. I don't know. There's a lot of grass here. You know, it keeps coming up the top of these hills here. We'll set the whole place out. Facing disaster, Milton phones home. Christina, all oh, this is on fire, a whole lot. The whole lot's going. Christina. Oh, oh, but Mrs. Jones has a handful. With no answer, Milton's got to get help from somewhere else. Last today, right there. You know, it's the last place I wanted to be, right? There's my fourth day in a row. Oh well, getting good at it, I guess. Or better. Unaware of Milton's troubles, rookie Jeff's mundane day is still crawling along. There's a lot of fences on this joint. I'm glad Alfie's here with me, I'd like to be lost. But his morning's about to get real shaken up. The turtle lagoon's on fire, a whole lot. You might get my turtle, she can throw that water cart on, eh? Just fill it up, we're not gonna be able to get near it yet. When fire breaks out at Coolibar, the workers become the firemen. It's not exactly like being called Triple O and just ask him to come round. We're just going to get into it now and we'll have a look. Right now, the fire's too intense to get close to. Still, Milton has to do something. See if we can at least put it out or put a fire break with a grader. Straight down the line. See that patch in the middle? Yeah. It's cleared either side. Let's just go straight up there. Milton's making a fire break an area free of trees and grass on the edge of the paddock. It should stop the flames from spreading, but like anything at Coolibar, there's no guarantees. This country, one minute it's bloody raining, and the next minute it's underwater, and then it's burning. There's always something going on in there, eh? Trying to make a quid, fighting the elements. Still losing her. She's still going. Wildfire has broken out at Coolibar, and it's moving towards the station's feeding paddocks. Christina, all the turtle lagoons on fire. A whole lot. Right there with them steers. Oh, we're going to put them wieners. Look, a whole lot's going. It looks like a bit of a grass fire is happening. It's a bit scary. Well, the worst that could happen is all the feeds destroyed, I guess. Although Milton's built a fire break to protect the valuable land, he knows it won't be enough. I'll have to get at it tonight with a water cart. We won't get near it now. It's bloody 20 foot flames, you know what I mean? Oh, just, you know, the best little paddock we got there too, right on the bitumen. I've been saving it full of feed, you know, for my wieners, and it should be gone in about three hours, I reckon. The cooler weather in the evening will make it easier to get at the fire on the ground. But when it comes time to go out, once again, one guy's getting left behind. Very frustrated. I'd love to try and help him pitch in. But I don't know what to do. How big is it? Oh, it's buddy nearly at that the what's the fence on the western side there, eh? And it's stretching nearly right into the river. You know, there's that old turkey nest there. Before going to tackle the fire, Milton sent a spotter to report on the blaze. Is it at the turkey nest yet? Nah, but it's only a few hundred metres away now, but I think that it's been graded there, eh? And hopefully it'll pull up. It looks like it will it's probably pull up there at that fence, I reckon. We lost one, Sally. There's another three that don't really easy. Right, it's going to keep going. Oh, you reckon or what? Oh, they shouldn't go any further to the west, but if the wind swings around, it might go back towards Fitzroy. Right? I don't... 
with the fire still out of control, Milton decides to take a man and the water cart to fight the blaze. We want to get out there and try and salvage what we can before they all go. Oh, I don't want to go. But not everyone wants him to. Milton's very good at what he does, but there's always an element of concern because the fires can come out of nowhere and you don't want to get stuck. Where's Milton? He's going into the truck there. With the seat going next to the boss, Jeff sees his chance. Just got told that Milton was going to go out there and fight a bushfire that had just broken out out in one of the fields. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So just asked if he needed a hand, and he did. Organised, Brad? All good. Come on, let's go. But Jeff has no idea what he's in for. Fire out. It's one big fire. Look out for snake coming out of the front of that fire. <clears throat> smell that mongrel smell there? Yeah. The plastic burning, that's our pipeline. Have you ever fought a bushfire before? Never. And you're about to learn. The plan is to circle the blaze spraying the edges to stop it from spreading. I'll go forward a bit. Want me to get it? Yeah, I'll be. Try and get a few of these little spot fires out around here. Once it burns, it's it finished for a couple of years, you know. It won't come back. Got a bit fine to spray. If they can get on top of it, the fire should burn itself out. That's it. <coughs> you right up there? <coughs> You know, you got all the smoke and just crap at your eyes and you're still trying to get as close as you can without getting burned or anything like that. Get it in there, look. See there? Keep your line going all the way. I didn't care how tired I was. I wasn't going to go to bed without demolishing some of it. Keep your hose out wide, that's it. With just water and willpower, the boys are starting to bring the edge of the fire under control. You all got him, Jeff. But one thing's running out. A bit more water. It's out. Oh, shit. Keep up it. A bit more water. While fighting the wildfire. It's out. Oh, shit. Milton and Jeff's water has dried up. Oh, no, no, jump, fill it up, mate. Jump in the front and let's go. If the boys go back to the station, the fire will flare up. But Milton knows somewhere else they can get a refill. Though the cattle shouldn't mind Milton taking their water, every minute spent refilling allows the fire to spread. Here it comes. Go. Now it's Milton and Jeff versus the fire. Round two. Fine spray all the way along the line. More water. <laughs> Get it in there, look. Spray it like hell like this. It's pretty crazy. Oh, jump in there, Jeff. Where you go? Go on. You get that feeling of self-achievement. There's a fire and then suddenly there's not, you know? That was one of the best feelings of the world. Get here, too. He's got a lot of energy, eh? He got himself together pretty well. Want me to jump over? No, you're right. Yeah, no, he looks all right, eh? Jump back in. Yeah, I think he's doing a good job, mate. Make a man out of him. Anything coming up behind him? You're all got him. Push by a man. Milton's happy they've sprayed enough water to bring the fire under control. Now it's home time. Come and get it. And maybe breakfast. 
Right, right, that's it for the day. What a team. <laughs> Definitely. I am ready. Don't. Big day. As Jeff hits the sack, you might look more beautiful if you had some more beauty sleep, I reckon. The rest of Koolibara just getting up. And you'd be forgiven for thinking there wasn't a giant fire last night. Oh, that's supposed to be D. Ready to kick her up? Yep. Yeehaw! I'm a cowboy, you know. Yeah, well. Milton knows all too well just how close it came. And he's checking the damage. I know there'd be probably 20 square k here gone, I suppose. But at least the fire's out. So Milton can count this one as a win. Sort of. That's the territory for you. One minute you got the lot, next minute you got nothing. Floods, fire. You got the whole lot up here. What do you do? You just get on with it, eh? Get another paddock. Let's go. The morning after the fire's trucking along. Or trotting along, depending on who you are. <laughs> we better get him over here and ask him a few questions, I think. <laughs> How long since he's flown? <laughs> Rookie pilot, come firefighter Jeff, is done sleeping in. Which makes him last to hear what his efforts last night have earned him. Jeff, we might bloody... might chuck you in the machine there and go for a run. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> you ready to go for a run or what? Let's do it. <laughs> What's with the skipping, Jeff? Get to jump in one. Excited to that. Get to finally jump in the chopper, so that's why I'm here. Can't wait to get up. You have to keep talking me through everything you do, right? Full movement. Play it. With his mentor, Stephen Groves, at his side, the kid finally takes control. All right, I'll just put the needles back at 75. Right, it's your machine. So just slowly, slowly bring it up until it gets light and skins, and then just put a little bit more in, OK? Right on. For Jeff, flying is everything. Nice and gently. Hold it, straight and level. Don't go backwards. But after being grounded for three months, it looks like he may have forgotten how. Get off your stick so much, stop biting your stick, loosen up, enjoy the flying, mate. Enjoy it, loosen up, give 10 seconds, look. Stop. Stop it, stop it. Put her on the deck. Let the machine just settle itself. Don't try and ride it to the ground, otherwise you get what just happened then, right? Yep. If you go flying like you are now, tensed up like that, a five-hour day is going to feel like a ten-hour day. Yeah. You learn how to fly to enjoy yourself, right? That's it. So let's enjoy ourselves. Have some fun. Yep. Right, I pick it back up in the hopper. Plenty of power up your sleeves. Everything's in the green. See that little bit of yellow on the ground there? Yep. Hopper over to that. I want you to turn. Turn in left. That's the way we're going to take off with the crosswind, OK? Yep. You want to take off out of here nice and professional? Righto. Do what you do, mate. Now that's more like it. Best thing in the world. 
you know, you just feel like, you know, you're just umbilical cord cut, you can just fly away and just do what you need to do. Really love and enjoy and thankful that I found something that I love. Oh, the chopper. He can fly a rod, eh? Yeah, definitely. He's got a plenty of drive to do things, so I'm sure he'll he'll excel. I didn't think he'd last a week, but he's been here three months now, so he's going all right, eh? I must be a good boss. <laughs> Feels good. Just the beginning. Definitely just the beginning. And as the Joneses watch Jeff fly into the distance, this is not how the story ends. When we come back to Cooley Bar, life for our extraordinary family just gets more surprising. Perfect whirly, we wouldn't been here for about five minutes, eh? Racing season throws little Milton <laughs> and Christina into competition. Christina got him, baby! The teenagers take hold of Cooley Bar. And the station won't give Milton a moment's peace. He doesn't want to go to the pen, does he, eh? He's a bit like OJ Simpson. Push you, Andrew. Alongside them, Hamish has a career change. <laughs> so does Groves. And if you thought Jeff was a stranger in a strange land, Hi, how are you? wait till you meet the Backpackers. I think we're 250 <laughs> kilometres from a shop. With more action, drama, There's a land and more of this little fella, Got to be a man of road train now. He's four years old. Ready, mate. Believe me, the Joneses aren't going anywhere. <laughs> and you know what? Next time we see him, Look at that. <laughs> there might just be another Jones on the way. I might sneak into a bar, rain up a few beers. <laughs> <laughs>